been here for about 10 years. Uh, as you know, we work in the citizenship space. We work in inclusion. Uh, my particular program is Canoe. This is the uh, Canoe app, which is offered to new Canadian citizens. Uh, participating cultural venues will uh, let our new Canadians through the doors free of charge. Uh, and we've had new Canadians do a victory lap of Canada in that year of membership. Uh, Via Rail is also uh, a partner. Uh, uh, traveling across Canada, coast to coast, stopping as they they may, and using their app to visit uh, visit venues that they may not have otherwise uh, uh, visited. So it's a real honor to um, to to meet you and to to also meet someone that's also in the inclusion space as well. Um, uh, I guess uh, one thing which I found out leading up to this interview is uh, in Ontario in 2014 uh, they established uh, uh, Sikh Heritage Month. Yes. You know that. So I'm going to welcome you by saying happy Sikh Heritage Month. Uh, Thank, you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Yes. Um, Nav, many immigrants look up to you. Uh, who was someone that you looked up to when you started your Canadian journey? Uh, who did I look? You know what? I, I've always looked up to my parents, my mom especially. And... Uh, she installed all those values which are making me look good today. They are making me successful. It's from my, you know, mother, which I I learned, you know, and my faith, which is Sikhism. So, and Sikhism has uh, guides me all the time because I'm so proud and humble because we, the Sikhs, our morning prayer every day since I've been a young kid, starts with asking for the welfare for everybody. Nanak naam chardi kala tere paane sarvat ka pala. That means wellness for everybody in respect of color, creed, gender, citizenship, whatever in the journal. So that's, you know, that's what has been my guiding uh, I would say my gurus and my faith have been my guiding light for this. I think it really shows, Nav. Um, uh, next question. Uh, do you remember the first time you truly felt Canadian? You know, I tell you one day that one thing, the, the day I took the oath, the, that was the most exciting sort of thing that I'm Canadian now, you know? Uh, my passport is the best passport in the whole world. And I remember arguing with a Swiss guy who was arguing that the Swiss, I said, no, it's the Canadian passport, which is the, and I was so blessed and thankful to the almighty for doing all that for me. And I'm sure you've traveled a lot with that passport. I know you've traveled through the States and Canada representing the Raptors family. Oh, yes. You've probably seen it all. And uh, we wanted to ask you, uh, what challenges have you faced over those years? And then fast forward to now, and have those challenges changed since your early days as super fan? Yeah, well, you know what? Initially, when I used to travel, I mean, uh, the Raptor thing only started in 1995. But before that, when I used to travel, I mean, people, I used to say, oh, you're oh, Canadian. They would look at it, Canadian? You know, I am Canadian. You know, I uh, uh, I remember I went to Costa Rica on a business trip and I was stopped at the, there and they said, oh, you know, so, you know, but, uh, 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 you know, I mean, that was my proud moments in shifting. But yes, I had people had doubt, you know, but this is the beauty of this country. You can wear a hijab, you can wear a turban, you can wear whatever you want and you are a Canadian. That's why I'm so proud, you know, moving forward, you asked me, you know, yes, it has been a, even like the judge was mentioning during the thing that there was a thing in Milwaukee, in, Milwaukee, uh, in 2019, I don't know if you're aware of that, there was a, there was a, you know, a guy from Milwaukee fan tweeted out something very bad, but uh, very 
disrespectful, but we converted that into a positive thing by taking him for a dinner with his family and then taking for a game and we became the friends. So now he's the, he talks about uh, uh, the Sikhs and the Canadians, you know, so it's all good now. But uh, again, I still see in this, we got to continue bringing the people together irrespective of the color or gender through the game of basketball. That's what my motto in life is, to bring the people together through the game of basketball. And NBA recognizes that, uh, you know, uh, and all the other people here also in Canada, they recognize that the, the political people also recognize that, that I am not to a particular party or anything. I'm just trying to bring the people together, especially all the Canadians together. But on a bigger sense, all the humanity together through the game of basketball. I love how you were able to take a, a moment of ignorance and move it into a moment of friendship, truly. I, yeah. I admire you for that. Um, I think uh, the last few years have been a roller coaster for people of color, and a lot of Canadians feel more vulnerable now than ever. And you've spoken about some of your experiences. We just heard you now. And uh, even though you're not invulnerable, you are super. What advice do you have for others that are experiencing moments like that, uh, moments of discrimination or racism in their daily life? You know, let me tell you, since I have arrived to this country from the very first time when I went to the interviews and all that, I saw, I don't call them discrimination, I call them speed bumps. Speed bumps in my life, you know, I've never, and you know what? I've never argued with anybody that you are discriminating me or this or that. I've always taken the other route. But again, that has been my training with my religion, with my family, with my mom especially, that I've been able to utilize that when the people go low, I go high. And now, you know, and uh, is it still here? Yes, at times it is. But again, we got to tackle it one at a time. And uh, you know what has gone south of uh, our country has really hurt me for the last year, year and a half. It has really hurt me because I know all these players who are black. You know, and some of these guys, they are, and they also go through it. I mean, I know a guy who's a big time player, Vince Carter. Even he, you know, being Vince Carter, he was playing for New Jersey. He was in New York and he was pulled over by, you know, by a car. So, you know, they all go through it. And, you know, now you saw the other day, it saddened me. I cried basically when I saw this army lieutenant serving America and they're pulling him over and they're spraying him and he's serving the country. I don't know if you saw that. I didn't see that, yeah. Yeah, I see that. It made you cry that they pulled him over, they put him in the handcuff and all that. And he was an army officer in the army uniform. So, you know, this hurts. It has to change. This has been going too long. Too many lives have gone. Look at George Floyd. Mm -hmm. You know, nine minutes and 29 seconds, the guy was on his, on his, Neck. Yep. yep. This is, and we are still debating that was he guilty or not when the world saw. But I think with these cameras now, with everybody having a camera with their cell phone, I hope that this is becoming a little bit more. It's happening. It has been happening for years and years. But now I think it is being brought to the attention thanks to the cell phone. So I hope it changes. During my lifetime, I hope it changes and we all become one. I don't like the divide in the world. We are all together. We are all kids of the almighty. And uh, let's be together and help each other and make this place a better place. I'm doing whatever I can do. I'm blessed to be a Canadian and Canada has been very good to me. And I came with nothing and I have more than what I deserve. And I'm going to continue doing the charities and the other things, working with the kids, working with World Vision, the Christian organization. I'm, I'm the global ambassador of building the washrooms. 
in the poor areas where the girls are not able to go to school. They drop out of the school when their period starts and they have no schools they're there because there's no washrooms. So we have built in the last three years, we have built 135 washrooms in 35 schools. And now in that particular area, every girl has a chance to go to school. Those are the things which excite me now. That's what I believe is, uh, you know, that gives me the most happiness. And uh, I'm glad that I'm able and God has put me in a position to do all these good things. Nav, we're lucky to have you take on all these amazing projects. And we see that, we see that uh, glow from you and we see that positivity from you. What inspires you and keeps you motivated to continue striving to achieve more like your project you described? You know, the hope when I see those kids, you know, smiling, I'm going to give you an example. When I go to the game, now, there was a kid, uh, Lavji, the guy who played the tabla. He said, I come to the game and I see you and this and that. But there's so many kids there who come. And, you know, I usually carry my, I'm blessed to get the championship ring, you know, uh, the players ring. And I'm the only one ever in the history of any sports to get that. I so, know. I, I, so I take that with me so that I can inspire the kids. And, you know, so many times I sit on the best seats in the in the house there on the court side. I bring kids after, you know, during a quarter, I'll pick up a kid who is sitting up. I'll bring him down there awesome. and give him the, uh, the uh, uh, sort of the bragging rights the next day in the school. I give him my ticket and I, I get him introduced to a player there. And it makes me happy to see the glow in this kid. This kid is from a sitting on a upper level young little black kid or, you know, it comes there and then he says that, uh, you know, and I tell him that, hey, you can do it too. I did it and you are smarter than me. <laughs> I mean, I came with a lot of strikes against me. You are born here. You're good on the computer. I still don't know how to use that. You know, I give them the hope. I take their, I put a ring on their finger, take a picture with the ring and then they go next day and they, you know, Right. This is what, when I see that smile on the kids, when I see the smiles on those girls who are going to school now, they were dropping out of the school at the age of 11. They had got married at the age of 13 and they had kids at the age of 14. That is a crime. That's a sin. So this, when I see those girls now going to school, it gives me the inspiration. It gives me to continue doing. And I want to continue and keep me in your prayers that I continue doing till my last breath. Fantastic. Because, because it's giving me and my family a lot of contentment. I tell you that. I wish you could bottle that, Nav. We all need that soft drink for sure. <laughs> um, here at the Institute for Canadian Citizenship, uh, nothing feels better than a win. And you're describing wins like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, nothing motivates us more than a win when we work together to affect change. So uh, I want to know your favorite moment, specific moment of impact from the Nav Bhatia Superfan Foundation. Uh, when you're really, you know, you got your arms in the air and you guys are like, we did it. <laughs> you know, the World Vision, me being an ambassador for the World Vision. And when they asked me, Nav, we want to do this area in India in Punjab, Farid Court. It's a very poor area. And the girls, they explained me the project. They said, we have been trying to do this project for two years. We have only collected $2,000. And uh, we have not been able to do that because we are a Christian organization and the Indian people don't want to support because, you know, we are very narrow people, even the Indian. I'll say that uh, because if we are Hindu, we want to work with the Hindus. If we are Sikhs, we want to work with the Sikhs. And we are in the, we, we try to stay in our tribe, you know. And what I did was I got out of the tribe and World Vision helped me to give me that opportunity. And I said, you know what? And they told me that now when you join us, people are going to throw you under the bus, your own community. Are you ready? I said, yes, I'm ready. I have a thick skin. I'm going to do it. Uh, being a, a, a Sikh, a visible minority and a Sikh with a turban and beard. I, I mean, I want to be representing the kids, Christian, Christian organization. To me, it doesn't matter if somebody is a Christian, black, Indian, Hindu, Japanese, Chinese, Jamaican, doesn't matter. Kids are kids. So I said, so the opportunity they gave me and then when I was able to go and really see those girls 
that they were saying, oh, now we are going to continue our education. I met so many girls who are the poor, the only sin they had was poverty. Yeah. They were from very poor family. So that's the time when I saw that. I said, now, yes, we did it. God, thank you. And continue, make, make me continue to do all that. So that's all it is. Fantastic. Um, I want to turn it back to the Raptors. I know you love talking about the Raptors. <laughs> yeah, this is a tough year, but go ahead. Well, you've been a fan since the very beginning, even before the beginning. Can you shed a little light on what drew you to the team way back then? What, what was that spark? Look, as an immigrant, and you know, when we come here, first thing is we want to find a job. Second thing, especially being an Indian immigrant, Indians are very big on having a roof on their head. They want to buy the home, you know. So first 10 years from 84 till 94, 95, I was just uh, busy working hundreds of hours a week. You know, I was a workaholic. And uh, so, you know, I was blessed. I bought a home, a new home in Mississauga, 3,000 square feet, double garage. And I was, you know, I thought that, and I had a couple of cars. So I said, I made it now. I, I was right, you know. But, you know, then I had no other hobbies. I didn't have any hobby, you know, other than catching up a Bollywood movie with my wife and family, but I had nothing else. So I said, you know, when the Raptors came, I used to watch Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, uh, Dr. J on the TV sometime with the games, the American games, you know. And I said, man, this is exciting, you know, the way the game is, you know. It's exciting. Based, yeah. yeah, so in 95, when the Raptors came, I said, I'm going to buy two tickets, you know. This is going to be my, this is what I need, maybe, so I'm going to try. So I bought only two tickets at the time, and I, I could only afford two. So, so, you know, I bought the two and I said, I'm going to try for a year. And I tell you one thing, the very first game I went, I remember it was at Sky Dome and I parked on Lakeshore, walked all the way uh, there. And, uh, you know, I saw it was a big, big arena, baseball arena with a basketball arrangement. And I tell you when I, I, I fell in love, I was in, I fell in love and, uh, it was the best game ever, you know, in any game in the sports. I'm from India, so cricket is the game there. But I, I fell in love. It's the fastest game. It's the most exciting game. And, uh, you know, I've never missed a minute of the game since uh, 1995. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have, uh, I'm just in love with the game. And this game has given me the opportunity you know what I'm doing today in my charitable things and all that with the world, with the NBA found, uh, and uh, Nab Bhatia Superfan Foundation. What we are doing, we are building a basketball court in Morton where I first arrived. Wow. We just uh, we are funding that. Uh, we gave them uh, the money so that they can build the courts there, so that the kids there are not wasting their energy in the malls and all those. They are going and playing basketball. So we are working with pandemic. It has. Uh, has a little setback, but I've already given them and funded them. And the city is going to build a basketball court there. And we are going to sort of have a program there. So this is uh, how I fell in love with basketball. And you know what? Now basketball is everything I got. You know, I mean, my schedule at home, My I miss my wife's uh, wedding anniversaries. I miss her birthday. If there is a game, my, everything is around the Raptor schedule. So, you know, I'm not too popular at home. <laughs> I'm not a super. I'm not a super fan at home, you know. Uh, yeah, you know. So this is uh, this is what it is. I'm. Uh, uh, so this is how it is. And but I tell you, but now all the family, my daughter and my wife, they're all behind it because we are able to do good things with my little bit fandom, whatever we have for the super fan. We are able to go, do good things and contribute in the community. Tremendous. Um, you mentioned a first before. I think I saw this on TV. I saw you receive a, a that famous ring. Yeah. I think the president did. I, that must have been a press conference just for you. And no, I could, no, no, no. It was a press conference in front of 100 reporters because on that day, they were we were going to raise the flags, uh, oh. the banner, and we were going to, everybody was getting a ring. So what they did is they gave the players the ring during the, the, uh, the, uh, the ceremony in the opening. But with me, they, I got a message from, I didn't know that, that I was going to get the players ring, oh. you know. So I got a message from Messiah's uh, office uh, just uh, before the halftime was over, uh, halftime, about a two, three minutes that they need you in the back, in the 
in the room. So I, I said, oh, you know, okay. So I went there and they surprised me with the players' room. So Larry Tonabom and Messiah and the Raptors, kudos to them. They are such an inclusive corporation. So I give them, I, I give them kudos for that. Well, I got to say, I can read something in your eyes. It's relief. It's joy. Uh, you're tearing up here. It yeah. meant so much to you. Here you are enjoying a huge win. Um, oh, this is this is a from the Oakland. You know, when, the, when I, uh, this is a f- picture you're bringing up. Let me tell you why. NBA security asked me because all the Raptors fans in Oakland on that day, mm-hmm. they went behind the Raptors bench. So there were two, three thousands of us, the Raptors fans. So we went behind the bench. So the NBA security tells me, now you are a super fan. You know, everybody knows you. Can you ask them to move out? So when I went there to talk to them, everybody saying, we the North, and they lifted me up. So they called me back. They said, now, <laughs> they said, now, we asked you to have them out. Why? And you are becoming a part of the Roy. <laughs> I said, look, I said, look, we are Canadians. Give us 30 minutes. Let's have our moment. And I tell you, we are going to go out quietly. Fantastic. And that's what the NBA security and the uh, Warrior security did. They said, we have never seen something like that, that a 3,000 people coming from the other team from all over the country, Canada, and doing that and doing the national anthem, Canadian anthem, and doing We the North. I mean, it was a scenery. So that's the picture you just showed me on the on there. Go Canada. And I brought up the ring because more recently, um, I wanted to ask you how you felt to be honored by the Canadian Basketball Hall of Fame alongside basketball stars such as Kevin Garnett and the late Kobe Bryant. Not the Canadian basketball, you mean the NBA basketball? NBA. So, so the full, yes. You said Canadian. That yes. Well, that's, uh, that's so, you know, that's unbelievable. Again, I tell you, I was in Oakland when we won the championship. We were underdogs, ever, always Raptors, Canadian team, always underdogs. I was there when we won the championship. I was the grand marshal of the parade. The next two days later, which happened, the biggest parade, a non-player, a non-player, a fan leading the parade. Yeah. Then getting the ring on October 22nd, 2019. Wow. The players ring. First time in the history of any sports. And then getting last All-Star, February 2020 All-Star, when they announced Kevin Garnett, Kobe Bryant, and uh, Tim Duncan to me to put in the in the super fan uh, gallery. That's, uh, you know, again, a guy who has a record of Zero, zero, zero in basketball, which <laughs> is a fair. And to be there, you know, I, I tell you, I salute, I kudos to NBA for recognizing that and doing and starting something new that a fan can be different. You know, we're a turban, we're a hijab, but here he's going to be there. Here he or she is going to be there in the uh, Basketball Hall of Fame in, in uh, Boston. And uh, they're doing the ceremony on next month. So everybody, all all the big wigs are going to be there. And I'm trying to make the plans to be there uh, with this pandemic and all that. So it's again, I pinch myself sometime that is this happening? I mean, I tell you on that day, uh, you know, I am, uh, and, and especially in the same year as Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett, the three greatest players. Incredible. And uh, so this is, you know, I mean, it is a, I have to pinch myself to see that. Well, Nev, your, your player record may be terrible, but I got to tell you, these honors couldn't have gone to a better guy. It's such a treat to interview you. Um, and uh, you deserve everything that has come your way. Thank you very much for being a great Canadian. But before we go, I just want to let you know uh, if we can do a rapid fire round uh, okay. of questions, because everyone had questions for you. And it's uh, rare to get uh, a wonderful guy like you on on uh, Thank uh, you. on here. So um, I'm just going to go through a few really fast first questions. I to, first, I want to correct you something. You just said everything I deserve. I uh, tell you, this is a God's blessing. I have more than what I deserve. I just want to let you know that too on the record that no, I have more than what I deserve and it's only blessings. 
Well, that that just makes me admire you more. <laughs> that correction, oh my goodness, just makes me admire you more, uh, Nav. So uh, let's head to a few questions here. Yeah. Um, uh, let me ask you, number one, what's your favorite Canadian dessert? After dinner, your favorite Canadian Cheesecake. Dessert. Cheesecake. All right. Next one, what's your most effective pre-game ritual? Do you have a pre-game pre ritual? Yeah, my prayers. Yeah. Every Very game. Very effective. Uh, who's the friendliest Raptors player? Oh, there's so many of them. There are so many of them. I mean, it's hard to say. Uh, right now, on the Van Vliet. Good. Okay. Uh, the, Vliet funniest, a, huh? the funniest Raptor player, if he's not also the funniest. Oh, funniest was Siakam. Uh, no, what, it was Ibaka, but I think it's uh, Van Vliet can be very funny also. Okay. Van Vliet is a complete package. <laughs> he's everything. Uh, here's here's another. And one. he's an amazing and he's an amazing family. His wife and kid, they're they're amazing people. Uh, you know, one thing we are blessed that everybody who comes to Toronto, they are you know they are they merge into this Canadian society and they become Canadian kind of a thing. They are very polite, so we are blessed to be having a, a lot of good people with us. You know, there are a lot of people, uh, players. This year, I've not been able to sort of intermingle with these new guys because they are playing in Tampa Bay. But I'm looking forward for October 28th when they first play here in this for the next season. I hope they're looking forward to seeing you too. <laughs> next question. Best yeah. chai in Toronto, in the GTA? Best chai in Toronto? Yeah. Uh, I would say quality restaurant in Brampton. All right, quality restaurant. There's a shout out for you. Uh, next one, your favorite Canadian musician? Drake. Drake, of course. Uh, next one, best stadium food? <laughs> <laughs> the fries, the wrinkled fries oh, in, the, uh, in the arena. The crinkly fries. Okay, uh, yeah. next one, uh, you mentioned Drake. What would be your favorite Drake song? Oh, from the bottom. From the bottom to the top. Yeah. Uh, and your best Tim Hortons donut flavor. Oh. <laughs> uh, Boston cream. Boston cream. I was figuring you'd say maple because there's something really Canadian with that. Yeah. Well, very generous Boston to say cream. Boston. <laughs> uh, next one and last one. What's your go to? takeout food in the greater Toronto area? Mexican. Mexican, 100%. Yep, supportly. Fantastic. Nav, I have to thank you for this. I really appreciate you uh, spending time with us, uh, spreading that, that glow, as I mentioned before. It's wonderful to hear about your accomplishments uh, and also uh, to hear you had a great time at the citizenship ceremony today. Nav Bhatia, super fan. Thank you so much on behalf of the Institute for Canadian Citizenship. Thank you very much and uh, keep me in your prayers. Thank you. You're here.